Saul, the very nature of the data that you come up with that speaks to the fundamentals of the universe, cosmology, origins, ends of the universe, is absolutely ripe with opportunity for those with a philosophical agenda. I don't mean that in a negative way. From all perspectives, to take it and appropriate for their own views, whether it's uh, believing in God or whether it's, it's an atheistic view. Uh, how do you look at it when, uh, when others kind of expropriate your data into their worldviews? I mean, I mean, the good part about it right, is the fact that it it's reminds I think everybody, of, of how much they enjoy asking these kinds of big questions. And so it's great to uh, just to realize that people can be stimulated and reminded of, of these kinds of questions by real data that is, seems relevant to, to, uh, to asking things about the world that we live in. Um, you know, specifically, uh, you know, in terms of these philosophical and, and potentially religious you know, issues that, that, come, that come in uh, of this sort, it always strikes me that there's lots of things that get all combined together. Um, when people talk about these kinds of questions, so that there's issues of how does the world work? I mean, very practical things like, you know, how is it that we don't fall through the floor? And how is it that, you know, the earth uh, you know, revolves, revolves around the sun? And those kinds of questions are, are you know, at stake. How, do, how did all that begin? So, you know, how the universe begin? Origins are critical. Seems clearly like the kind of thing that people, you know, pull in, in into these kinds of questions. But then there are all these other questions of meaning. You know, what does this all mean? And do we have any sense of, uh, you know, where are we with respect to the universe? And, and you know, in what sense are we important or not important? In what sense is there, do you, can one glean any purpose um, be, because of looking at the, uh, at these other issues? And there's a in my mind, I often feel like these get conflated together um, and that they are somewhat separate questions and you can actually ask them in, and see does each one of them uh, get affected by the measurement that you're making. Um, and once you've done that, does that have any implication for the other questions? Mm. So how do you look at it personally? I mean, how do you look at the philosophical or indeed theological implications uh, of the work that you do? Well, partly I... I um, there are these sort of emotional aspects to it, right? To the extent to which you feel when you get to look at the universe in this way that you sort of reach out and you touch things that are astronomically distant, you know, literally, yeah. uh, it, it makes you feel a little bit more um, like you are part of all this, that you're, uh, that you're nicely centered between the huge yeah. and the small, and, that, you know, and, and, that's, and that's what we are as, as humans, and that we actually get a chance to touch it with our minds, that we get to think about the, the, the world and, and be able to invent theories that make some sense out of it, that all makes you feel a little bit more connected, you know, in some sense, to, to this world that we find ourselves some in. Some theologians would point to just that comprehensibility as one of the, uh, if not proofs for the existence of God, at least a, uh, a, a signature for what you would expect if there were a God. And, and for me, it, that particular um, angle doesn't it doesn't have as much resonance um, in and of itself. I find that, you know, just standing alone, this fact that um, that you feel the surprising uh, connections of our, you know, and that we are able to touch uh, the universe and explore and figure things out, is gives a little bit of a there's a little sliver of meaning in there for me somewhere. But it doesn't necessarily immediately tie into questions of of uh, you know, God or no God. It, for me, it feels like it's over here and doesn't necessarily. But it is a kind of meaning. When but, you're but, touching exactly, the that, fabric of existence and looking back 10 billion years and, and, and being able to see in, in, in your lifetime, which uh, sadly is measured in a few decades, but within those few decades, you're able to project universal history over 10 billion years. That's remarkable. Right, right, exactly. And that feels like this, I mean, and it's not clear what kind of meaning it is. I mean, there's, there's, yeah. there's a little glimmer of it there. <laughs> um, and then similarly, um, the fact that you um, start to explain more and more and more of the world around us by simpler and simpler concepts. Um, I, you know, and that's, of course, one of the big goals of, of, of fundamental physics, uh, you know, is to try to get to the point that almost everything we see um, can be, you can understand it um, with, with, a, with a very elegant, simple, I don't know, set of equations that you know, would, be, would be nice. You know. um, that, in some sense, takes off the table some of the things that people used to think um, had to be on the table along with right. issues of right. Uh, of theology. Um, and so, you know, I think in some sense it can simplify the story. It can say that, well, 
look, these aren't the issues that we're talking about anymore. Let's, you know, and, and maybe there's still some kernel left that people would then like to discuss of, but even so, is <laughs> right. there something that we're right, interested right, in that we right. you know, might describe as right. a religious sentiment? Right. Let, let me tell you a big problem that you have caused to a group of theologians mm -hmm. who would look at the universe in some progressive way towards God enacting some grand purpose and coming out to some result. And uh, by showing the universal expansion is not just there, but accelerating and seemingly accelerating into a, a, a diffuse oblivion, that has put a certain theological camps into, into a quandary. How do they deal with that? And so some have, uh, well, first of all, how, how does it make you feel to have put some theologians into a quandary? Well, I guess I feel like in some sense, the scientific, uh, our understanding of the world um, should always put any thinkers into a quandary. Right? I mean, that's the whole point of, of learning more about the world, that okay. any ideas that you have about how the world must be um, should always get bounced off of what we discover the world really is like. And then it's, and I think that's part of the whole fun of being a, a thinker, right? that you get to, uh, to rethink what it is that you believe um, every time there's some new information out there in, in the world. And so this is a, a, a prime example, I think. Well, what you yeah. have is, is science, and particularly measurement, observation, data, constraining what your philosophical bounds are in anything, in science, philosophy, Precisely. religion. Precisely. And so what yes. you have done in, with your data in a big area of importance in cosmology is constrain everyone's thinking. Everybody has got to operate within the bounds of your data. And, and, it's, and it's not necessarily just a constraint, right, because it could open up a whole new okay. window. And in the end, what you hope is that, um, that you know, this works is a dynamic thing where you end up realizing, oh, this area that we thought we would, you know, that would be the, where we find our, our answers to things, Probably it's the wrong one, but it opens up the possibility of moving in a different direction. It, it works together, because when you're constrained and you're forced to move in a channel, it may force you to move to where if, if you're dealing with truth, you can't violate it, but it may push you in a direction that you wouldn't have gone before. Precisely, and in some sense, it's one of the real sources of creativity for human beings, I think, when they find themselves cornered in what they originally thought, and they realize, well, I just have to think outside of what I was, you know, where I was, and it's... Uh, it's the classic example of that. Well, I, I know a certain theologians would take the I expansion of the universe as recognizing that we can therefore not realistically try to get God's ultimate purpose constrained within this universal history. So if we're going to have that, which we believe as theologians, I put myself in their place for a moment. Yes. Uh, give me that yes. uh, 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 large S. Um, so that, that they now have to have a mechanism of saying, okay, at some point or something, that God would have to make some transformation because they can't, they can't have it naturally evolve because of w what's happening in the, expan the accelerating expansion. Now, of course, I could imagine that there must be, um, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, but I would imagine there must be theologians who could come at it from lots of different angles on that, right? You, one might say that, well, that would suggest that the ultimate purpose um, it, it, you know, would be something, uh, if, if it has to be ultimate in time, um, which isn't necessarily uh, you know, yeah. taken for granted, but let's imagine that the, the uh, purpose has to end up somewhere, then maybe there's some reason that you want a very diffuse universe at the, at the end, and uh, you know, we, don't, we don't even know what, the, what that goal would be. So I, I imagine there'd be one group that would say that. Another yeah. group might say, um, the only way to get the interesting things to happen in the middle is to have a universe that began this way and ends up that way, but right in the middle, you get all the interesting <laughs> stuff happening. <laughs> right. I mean, you could, I mean, it's just been so many places that you could go with that same information that I'm not sure that it, 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 um, it nails the case of, is there a purpose that's you know, that's written in the universe. You would have made a terrific theologian, but I'm real happy you stayed in cosmology. <laughs>